machine, first we're going to wind the bobbin. And to wind the bobbin, we need to retrieve the bobbin. You can slide off your removable storage compartment and open the latched cover. Put your finger on this small latch on your bobbin holder. Pull it forward and tilt it to retrieve the bobbin. Your machine uses class 15 transparent bobbins. So when you want to purchase additional bobbins for your machine, make sure they're Singer Class 15 transparent bobbins. Take one of your spool pin felts and place it on the spool pin and push it all the way down. And set your thread spool on top of that. We're going to wind the bobbin first, so we're going to follow the dashed threading path indicated on the top of your machine with diagrams. So bring it first into this guide, following this dashed line. This one shows me to bring it around the bobbin winding tension disc like so. And we want to pull the thread to make sure it's snug under the disc. Continue pulling it over to the right. Place it from the center out through one of the holes on your bobbin, like so. And then set it onto the bobbin winding spindle and push it down, all the way down as far as it will go. And then push the bobbin and it's spindle to the right. Continue holding the thread in your right hand as you step on the foot control to begin winding. Stop for just a moment so you can trim the thread tail close to the bobbin and resume winding. You can stop any time when you have as much thread as you want on your bobbin, or you can continue winding until it's full. It will stop automatically when it's full. When the bobbin is full, push it to the left, lift it off the bobbin winding spindle, and cut the thread. We're ready to place it in the bobbin holder. Next, place the bobbin in the bobbin holder. Pull the thread tail to make sure that the bobbin is turning clockwise. If the bobbin is turning counterclockwise, you'll need to pull the bobbin out and put it back in so it's turning clockwise. That's very important. Next, bring your thread into this small slot and then bring it under this metal tab until you feel it and hear it click in place between these small little arms on this metal tab. Hold the latch, and with this finger pointing straight up, push it in place and release the latch. Now that we've wound a bobbin and inserted it into the machine, we're ready to thread the top of the machine. And there are two things you need to do before you do anything at the top of the machine with the thread, and that is to first raise the presser foot lifter, that's very important and then turn the hand wheel toward you so that the needle is raised up and that you see the thread take-up lever come up here so that it's completely visible. At the top of the machine, if you just wound a bobbin, it probably looks something like this. So we're going to take the thread out of the bobbin winding tension disc. So it's just coming off the spool into this first thread guide. Now, lightly hold the thread with your right hand as you hold the end in your left hand and bring it around this thread guide here, like this, just like it shows on the diagram. And then bring it down, around the U-turn, up to the right of the take-up lever, then bring it over to the left and come forward so that the eye of the take-up lever is threaded. 
bring the thread down to the needle area. Now bring the thread around this thread guide just above your needle and thread the needle from front to back. Continue holding the thread in your left hand and pull it lightly as you turn the hand wheel toward you to bring the needle down and up again. And as you pull the thread to the left, you'll see a loop come up. This is your bobbin thread. You want to bring the bobbin thread all the way up through the hole on the needle plate and then place both threads underneath the presser foot to the back. Close the cover and you're ready to start sewing. Now that we've threaded the machine, we're going to test the stitch to make sure we've threaded correctly. With both threads under the presser foot and out to the back, and our machine set for straight stitch, place the fabric underneath the presser foot, lower the presser foot lifter, and step on the foot control to begin stitching. Finish sewing, turn the hand wheel toward you to raise the needle to its highest position and continue turning until it just starts to come down. And raise your presser foot lifter and if you like you can use the thread cutter at the side of the machine to trim your thread tails. And there's our stitch. Looks good on the front side and it looks good on the back side so now we know that we've threaded the machine correctly. When you sew, if you find that the back side of your fabric has loops or it's bunching up thread, that's actually an indication that you threaded the top of the machine incorrectly. So unthread the top of the machine and re-thread it. Now that we've tested our stitch and we know that we've threaded correctly, let's try sewing a seam. This is your needle plate and you'll notice that your needle plate has markings on it Back here, there are fractions of an inch, and in the front area, there's metric. We're going to use the 5 8 inch marking for a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So place your fabric under your presser foot so that the edge of your fabric is lined up on that 5 8 inch seam line. Lower the presser foot lifter, and then sew two to three stitches forward, and then press and hold the reverse lever to sew three or four stitches in reverse. Release the reverse lever and continue sewing forward. When you come to the end of your fabric, press and hold the reverse lever and sew three or four stitches in reverse. Release the reverse lever and sew forward again to the end of the fabric. Turn the hand wheel so the needle is all the way up into its highest position and just begins to come down. And raise the presser foot lifter and trim your threads on your thread cutter. By sewing reverse stitches at the beginning and end of our seam, this locks our seam so that the stitches don't unravel as we continue working on our project.